We're used to receiving challenges in some pretty strange places, but we were rather baffled when we were sent to the seaside town of Worthing. Especially when we were told to book a hotel near the seafront and wait in our room. Susie, did you book this hotel room? Yeah. And, and you asked for twin beds? Could have. <coughs> <laughs> this will be our challenge. Good. Susie Otis, your challenge is to drag the good old British hotel into the 21st century. Using your extensive gadget knowledge, you are to tech out a room in this very hotel. Your efforts will be judged by a hotel inspector. So, get to it. And remember, the customer's always right. Yes, I wish more hotels would think that. <laughs> Travelling around the world looking at the best tech on the planet means the whole of the gadget team is very familiar with hotels. There are good ones, bad ones, and even a few spectacular ones. But on the whole, they're pretty bland, where the most memorable piece of tech in the room is the trouser press. It was clear that transforming our chintzy seaside B&B into a cutting-edge gadget hotel would be a major challenge. So I decided to contact a futurologist, someone who predicts future developments in technology based on existing trends. And I decided on a more practical approach by flying to Germany to see the future hotel in Duisburg. Oh, wow. Now this looks cool. It's not a real hotel, but a university research project where the travel industry tries out tech to see what might be possible in the future. The researcher's aim is to use tech to make the future hotel room as restful and stress-free as possible. So, no switches or zappers, just lots of relaxing mood lighting and voice control tech. Computer, please raise the temperature of this room to 21 degrees. Certainly, Mr. Healy. Definitely a bit toastier, yeah. Uh, and, and what about this? Um, I feel like a bit of music. How about uh, something classical, computer? Certainly, Mr. Healy. Back in Britain, I'd arranged to meet up with Peter Cochran, former head of research at BT Laboratories and futurology blogger. So, Peter, what kind of tech do you think we should be looking at? Well, I guess my best example is if you go to Korea today, you use your mobile phone for everything. It's your credit card, it opens your doors, you can buy a coffee, you can pay for a cab. So I'd like to come in the room and, and use your mobile. You bet. What about the bathroom? The bathroom is one of my favourite nightmares. <laughs> you could not predict the number of variations on turning a tap to get water out that there are. It would be so nice to go into a hotel where there's just a button that says go, stop, on, off, yeah. hot, cold. Over in Germany, I'd already seen the future of bathrooms and it was brilliant. Now check this out. The bathroom has a spa feel to it. There's a massive glass window so I can see into the main room and keep an eye on what the missus is up to. A massive bath with jacuzzi function, and they've integrated infrared heaters into the wall behind me. Now, obviously, you can't see it, but I can feel the heat coming off that. It's like having your own mini sauna. Ooh. There's also a fully integrated media display in the computerized bathroom mirror, and there's even a device that produces scented steam. Mm, wild lemon. But there's more. Get up in the middle of the night and pressure sensors in the floor switch the bathroom light on. How cool is that? Well, I don't see why I can't come into a hotel room and have all my photographs on Flickr on the TV screen. There's no reason at all why I shouldn't come with all my preferences loaded on my mobile phone and they're instantly adapted into that room. Back in Germany, I was really getting into the automated lifestyle. Computer, rock the bed. Yes, Mr. Dealey. Sweet dreams. So, we'd seen and heard some great ideas for dragging our good old British hotel into the 21st century. But there'd still be plenty to do before it was ready for the arrival of the hotel inspector. Right, we've cleared the room, and one of the first things that we're going to do is get rid of the old-fashioned, cumbersome hotel room key. We've looked at loads of different keyless technology, and we've come up with the idea of using, arguably, one of the most successful gadgets of all time, the mobile phone. Mobile phones already incorporate cameras, MP3 players, sat-navs and computers, and now some can also be used as ID cards using RFID or radio frequency identification chips. 
just like the ones in prepaid travel cards used on the London Underground. Nokia are leading the way and already have RFID phones, but it's rumoured the next iPhone will also have this technology. Right. Try it now. OK, here we go. Yay! Excellent. It works. Yeah. Look, you can't get in. You can't yep. get in. Hold it to the door. You're in. Cool. Obviously, it's vitally important to have a lovely, comfy bed in a hotel room. Indeed. We wanted something that was just a little bit gadgety. <laughs> so we got this bed with a built-in PlayStation and a built-in LED TV screen. Nice. Nice for watching your late-night telly. Hey, I'm not sure about this black sheet. Oh, no, no, definitely black sheets. Yeah. And of course, we couldn't have a TV in PlayStation 3 without including a full surround sound system, which is also hooked up to a smartphone dock that includes a DAB radio and it provides your early morning alarm call. One of the aspects I really liked about the future hotel I visited was the voice automated tech, but that was just a prototype, it was just a university research project. But I've managed to find a way to incorporate it into our gadget hotel room using commercially available tech. The HAL 2000 system runs on virtually any computer and can switch on and off any electrical device. It works by constantly listening for keywords and phrases that it's already been pre-programmed with. If it gets a match, it carries out a command. Right, that's all wired up. Let's see if it works. Computer, close powered curtains. OK. Com computer, open powered curtains. Okay. Yeah, see, it works. Cool. And that's not all. The tech can be linked so one single command can activate up to 250 gadgets. That's more than enough for our hotel room. Another thing which impressed me at the Future Hotel was the lighting. So I've connected motion sensors to turn our lights on and off for those nighttime trips to the bathroom. Now, all this tech is going to generate heat. So we've added a bladeless room fan to keep our inspector cool. But we haven't just thought about the guest, we've also thought about the hotel staff. So we installed a state-of-the-art computerised minibar that was connected to the main hotel computer, a hand and body dryer to reduce the need for towels, and a Samsung Navibot robot vacuum cleaner to help keep the room clean. Though I felt we shouldn't do the French maid out of her job. We've made the bed the central hub of our hotel room. Not only does it have a television and a PS3 plugged into it, but we've done away with the spy hole in the door, so if anyone comes a-knocking... Hey, I look. It's Susie, and that is fed straight into our TV. Hi, Susie. No, I'm not going to let you in. Let me see what's in your hands. <laughs> see? And it's not just the bedroom that's been automated. This is what we've had retrofitted to our bathroom. It's called the Bathomatic, and it allows me to make the perfect bath without getting my fingers wet. I can control temperature of the water, I can drain it whenever I want, and also I can determine what level I want the bath filled. It's brilliant. And it gets better because you can control the Bathomatic by using an app wirelessly. So, I can fill the bath up. I'm going to fill it up! No! Don't fill the bath up! I'll make it halfway! I'm going to make it hot! No! No! I want it tepid! Hot, because I'm a girl. And finally, one of the ways that we're going to try and impress our hotel inspector is by knowing exactly who he is as he walks through the door. And for that, we're going to use this little bit of technology that was actually devised for sports. Sports people need to accurately measure their times when they pass a finishing line, and it's now possible for them to do this using specially developed RFID chips. Most RFID chips need a direct contact, like the one we used in our door lock, but because these ones are powered by a tiny lightweight battery, their information can be read from up to two metres away. So what we've done is discreetly embedded this technology into his luggage tags. So when he walks over our welcome mat here, it'll be registered and then we will know on our screens that he's arrived and all his information will come up. I said a small welcome mat. Well, I want him to feel really welcome. Well, we thought we'd done really well, but that didn't matter anymore because a real-life, genuine, professional hotel inspector was coming down to judge our work. This was judgment day for our gadget hotel. Upstairs, we chucked out the chintz and replaced it with the best tech we could find. 
Our room is ready for our very special guest. Oh, let's put the TV down. Outside, we laid a sneaky RFID reading welcome rug that would allow us to identify the inspector from his chipped luggage even before he sets foot in the hotel. Oh, the beep. And it worked. Check the room, go check the room, go check the room. Hello, Mr Robertson. Yes. Welcome to the hotel. Now for our second RFID gamble. Did you get a text from us? I did. So that's your access into your room? We'd done away with his room key and replaced it with the inspector's own RFID-enabled smartphone that, when activated, could be used to open his hotel room door. And once again, it worked. OK, so the respectable thing to do here would be to let him settle in, have a good tryout of the room and then have a chat to see what he thinks about what we've done. But where's the fun in that? So instead, we're going to watch him all the time he's in the room. He's having a look around. Mini bar. Mini bar. Checking Lights. the ambient lighting, yeah. Put the fan on. Oh, he's switching it on. Turning it on. It's quite warm today, I bet he likes that. It's yes. around sound. He seemed genuinely impressed by our gadgets, but the StarTech was undoubtedly the voice activation system, which we'd given him three command phrases for. Morning mode, daylight mode, and my personal favourite... Movie mode. OK. Ah, uh, oh, he's trying to it work. The curtains, yeah. it worked. It worked like a treat. The curtains closed, the lights went off, and the TV rose out of the bed. He's laughing. Yeah, he likes that. Daylight mode. Okay. He's making himself comfortable, which oh, is good. Oh, he's opened the curtains again. Yep. Very good. Like kids in a sweet shop, look. Next, he decided to check out the bathroom, and he had no problems getting to grips with the bathomatic app on his smartphone. He's filling That's up the bath. Bathomatic. He is. He's running about. Yeah, and he's listening out for it as well. Don't worry, it's working. Our inspector now had to cram a full overnight stay into just a few hours of gadget hotel living in order to make his judgment. We just had to hope that he would appreciate all the advantages of our tech-filled hotel room while experiencing it at warp speed. Good morning. This time, the HAL 2000 voice activation system opened the curtains, switched on the radio and boiled a super-fast kettle. We were delighted. The tech had all worked brilliantly. But had we done enough to impress our hard-nosed professional hotel inspector? Hey! What do you say, guys? What do you say? What do you say? You're not bothered what I think, No, I'm so respectful. How many cows did we get? Is the... In all good time. <laughs> oh. I feel like John Bentley, it's great. So, first of all, the RFID greeting, that's the radio frequency identification, Matt, and the, and yeah. the text message that he got, he loved it. Yay. Excellent. Yes. It's great. You could see it being implemented in hotels, oh, which I think cool. is a great compliment. Good. Next up, you replace the key with a mobile phone. Yes. Yeah. Lovely touch. Again, you could see the industry really liking that. Yes. All right? Because good. a lot of money is wasted, apparently, on lost keys. Two for two. Two for two. Well done. Voice control, all yes. right? Yeah. That's the, you know, the curtains. Oh, he loved that. He loved it. Up. He was yeah, smiling. Well getting down well, to it. I felt a bit daft. Really? But then once he got <laughs> used to it, he said he thought it worked well. Oh, cool, Hooray. cool, all right? Maybe it's just that thing about... Being... Talking to yeah. yourself. Getting used yeah. to it. Yeah. Getting used yeah. to the technology. Yeah. Yeah. OK, and the automated bath, all right? He loved it. An excellent feature. Yes. yes. Because yes. a lot of damage is caused by overfilled baths. That is my excellent. favourite. Hey, how about that? Some really positive yeah, comments, yeah. but yeah. all of this really powers into insignificance compared <laughs> to the star rating that he awarded Susie and Otis's Gadget Hotel. Yeah, because yeah. we started off as a three star. Correct. You started on three oh, stars. Oh, no, we didn't go backwards. No, 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 I've got to be honest with you, I was sort of hoping that you regressed to a two, maybe even a one for That's comedy mean. value. But you didn't. You improved it to a four yeah! star! Yeah! 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 Yeah!